everyone, it's Jesse G here. Welcome back to the second part of John Wilmot's second Earl of Rochester episode. This is episode number 14. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the first part. This is the second half. This is just kind of where we just talk about um, what I was talking about in the first episode. And I talk a little bit more about it in this one. Um, uh, I hope you guys got a lot from that episode and learn, and it's been learning a lot about these people and about their lives and all that. Um, I kind of wanted to dive in a little bit more into this a little bit with you guys. So I, uh, sit back, eat your food, breakfast or whatever, and let's get going. Age warning. If you're under the age of 18, this is not an episode for you to listen to. If you are triggered or sensitive to any of the topics talked about in today's episode, this is not an episode for you to be listening to. If you do choose to listen to it at your own discretion, I highly recommend you watch it with somebody like your emotional support system. Um, that way, if you get triggered by any of this angrily or emotionally or whatever, you have your emotional support system with you. And with all of that said, I hope you guys saw the copyright disclaimer and everything in the beginning of this before it started as well. I gave you another warning with the the age and the trigger. I hope you guys took it and let's get into it. Um... When I was kind of talking about, in the last episode, when I was kind of talking about that John Wilmot was really young when he took the title. Um, John Wilmot, like I was saying, he was a bit of a rebel. Um, he kind of collided with Parliament. He kind of collided with King Charles. Um, King Charles was not really the best king in the whole world. He collided with Parliament. Um, especially at the fact that he had to fight his way uh, to get the throne back after it was lost to uh, um, a man named Thomas. Um, he was uh, king for only a short while. Um, he kind of re uh, rebelled against King Charles and his family and the late uh, King James I. Um, who uh, was executed for uh, uh, treason against Parliament and uh, all of England, anyways. Um, it was really rough for King Charles. It was really he had a really rough start. So when he met um, John Wilmot's uh, Henry Wilmot's uh, the first Earl of uh, Rochester's son, he kind of. It wasn't so much that he just took a liking to him or that he admired him, but it was just like, you know, here's this young man who has all this potential, who's a poet, who's really interesting, and I'm really um, uh, impressed by him, and I see a lot of things in him, and, you know, this is a person that I could become friends with and, you know, be kind of like a father to him in a way. Um, and, you know, uh, maybe hopefully put him on the right direction or some sort of a way. And I think that's what their friendship really was. But it's really sad that as the years went on, it went sour. Um, you know, John Wilmot was a really, uh, he was full of life, but he was definitely a type of, young man that liked to get himself into a lot of trouble, um, especially when he tried to accord uh, Elizabeth Mount. Um, and the, the movie that was uh, made and directed by, I think, John Malkovich, but um, when it was uh, made, it kind of explained a, a little bit about um, John's relationship with Charles, their friendship, and, you know, um, how much Charles relied on John Wilmot and how much he really admired John for his work and how um, fast uh, their friendship came to an end and how uh, his death was a tragic end and how John tried to redeem himself before he died. He, uh, It was said in the movie that he went to uh, Parliament and kind of spoke out and tried to um, do the right thing 
to uh, redeem himself because he knew he was dying. He knew that this was it. He he was. There was a lot of diseases back in the 1600s that weren't treated like they are nowadays. The medical profession really wasn't the best in the 16, 1700s, even into the mid 1800s as well. Um, it still really wasn't good in the 1920s either. Um, I don't think it really hit a real big strive till probably the 1990s, really, if you really want to know the truth. I mean, it really didn't start rocketing till the 1970s where uh, the medical profession started to open up a little bit more. Um, but their, their med the medical stuff wasn't it far, as far as diseases and viruses were really hard to combat uh back then you know they weren't treatable they didn't have the doctors and nurses like we do now and even when a woman was pregnant back then it was very dangerous because they didn't have the medicines or the epidurals that women can have you know they didn't have all the stuff that women have when they give birth it was like complete pain and natural and there was so much um dangers into it because sometimes there was moments where um a woman could die give, uh, giving birth or the child could die from um um after birth or during birth or whatever so when john wilmot got riddled with all of these uh, now what we call stds and possible of uh, because of him drinking so much um and doing what he did, it kind of caught up with him, so it 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 forced him to not it forced him into a corner it forced him to face up to his uh downfall it just basically ultimately ended him you know his own uh lack of caring for himself and you know, he just let himself sort of go um, from the look sounds of it because of the way that he was described in the movie and the way that he was kind of described in what I was reading about him. It just sounded like he just, towards the end of his 20s and into his 30s, he just sort of let himself go. And I just think that was his ultimate ending to him. You know, it was just kind of like his life and then how he just fell from grace, so to speak, you know. And it was very, in what very what interested me the most, I should say, about this uh, John Wilmot was the relationship he had with King Charles. It was very interesting because their relationship was kind of like a father-son relationship but ultimately a friendship it's like you know but it was also um it was also made he was also made to make sure that john understood that he's the king and you don't want to disappoint him or offend him because it might be your own doing and it what john wilmot did that ultimately spiraled into what led him into his death and the offenses he made against the king and him being divided about the things that the king was trying to go for and, you know, um, his uh, rebelness against the king at, in the end, um, it ultimately ended the friendship and it was just really tragic the way that he died. It didn't even make a sound or a shudder or anything. He just basically died in his sleep and it was just really a tragic story to a man who was uh a really good poet his works are out um a lot of his uh works are known now a lot of his poems are known now and his friend made a lot of uh plays based on uh published a lot of things about his friend and his life and you know, he got a, he, there was a lot of stuff that was made about John Wilmot because he made this huge impact in this history and such an impact in Char King Charles II's reign and 
you know, he did all these good and bad things that he, I think he just kind of made a really big name for himself. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily in a good way or a bad way, but, you know, um, he just, you know, he, he kind of had, he had his moments, you know, he was a really ambitious young man, but I think in the sensible way, he was a bit of a rebel, to so to speak, you know, he just kind of really got himself into trouble a lot. So it was very interesting. The movie was very interesting. It shed a it shed a lot of light on what John Wilmot's life was really was, and what the play and what was uh, written about him. Um, uh, he did have four kids. Uh, did have a total of five kids. He did have a child with uh, Elizabeth uh, Barry. Um, it was said in the movie that he didn't know about his daughter's birth until uh, when he was 33 and clo and he was uh, close to dying. He didn't uh, know about it and I don't think he ever really saw her. I'm really not sure of the situation in that because you know the, the movies can kind of vague up a lot of things. They can make things a lot of fiction and not, and not non-fiction. So uh, it was a little bit uh, strange when it came to their relationship. I mean, it lasted five years. I mean, and then he, and then the sad part about it is he even grew to resent Elizabeth for her, her accomplishments because of her being a woman. And, you know, he was the one that trained her in the first place. And, you know, here he is resenting her for doing what she loves doing. You know, it was almost like he made his own worst enemy <laughs> in a sort of a way. Um, it was just, uh, it was a very, very, very strange, um, there is a lot of photos, um, uh, on John Wilmot and about him. He was, uh, born in, um, a Dutchery, Oxford, England. Um, that was what I was meaning to say, but that came out really wrong. And he died in Woodstock, Oxfordshire, England. Um, there was a, It was to believe to be the uh, complications from his uh, syphilis. That was known um, back then a lot. Uh, uh, there was a lot of known diseases back then, not just necessarily STDs, but there was a lot of diseases known back then that were really hard to deal with. So it was just like, you know, um, his noble works was a uh, story um, against reason and mankind, letters from uh, Artemis um, and also then to Herod's. Um, a ramble in St. James Park, um, the imperfect, uh, enjoyment, um, those were some of his noble works, um, uh, you know, those were some of the, uh, the spouse was Elizabeth Wilmot, uh, Countess of Rochester, um, you know, um, his parents, uh, his mother, who was Anne St. John, um, it was shown in the movie that him and, there was a lot of friction between him and his mom, but he really confided in his mom a lot. Um, his mom was like, um, somebody who, uh, uh, was a big influence on his life and what he did and um as a poet you know he was just she was just really there for him um uh his upbringing was a little bit uh weird to say the least <laughs> um he did a lot of works um 
for the king. Um, he did a lot of works for just people in general. Um, in the movie, there was said to have been a play that he was supposed to do and that it ended up um, offending the king. And that's what ultimately spiraled into what uh, happened to him, ultimately angering the king. Um, I'm not really sure if that was uh, just something that was made fiction or not, but that was the ultimate thing that they showed that uh, spiraled uh, into what was later John Wilmot's downfall, really. Um, uh He was really close to a lot of his friends, but, you know, you always get those friends in your life, um, you know, it just, it was weird, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a very tragic life, I should say. I'm um, sorry, I was looking at my notes here, but it was just a very tragic life for him. I mean, you know, uh, it was, I don't know how to really say this, but it was just a really tragic life he lived. You know, he went from being in the spotlight and being well known and you know just everybody boasting about him and him being really famous to just spiraling down and by the age of 33 everything just kind of fell apart for him which was really sad but anyways um my thoughts and my opinions of this whole thing was it was, like I said, it was very interesting. That's what drew me to do this. That's what made me want to talk about him. Um, plus, I never really did anything on him before. He was just very interesting. His life was interesting. Um, the way that Johnny Depp portrayed him and the way he brought out John Wilmot's personality. He was just kind of a real... In, in some ways, he was a jerk. And in other ways, he was... Uh, gentle and loving and in the middle there was just him and his politics and his poet and him his relationship with King Charles and you know just everything in general so it was it was a very interesting life he lived um it's easier to look him up it's easy to find out more about him if you wish to find out more about him um there's also paintings and everything uh, pictures and photos that you can find of him. Um, you, know, you can uh, look up his wick and find his uh, works and everything. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this second part. It was a very long second part. It was just kind of reflecting on the first part, you know, and talking a little bit about it. But if you haven't hit that red subscribe button already and that notification bell, um, go ahead and go hit it so you'll be notified as to when I upload videos in the future. If you wish to be even more notified, follow me on all of my social medias that are listed under this video in the description box. Uh, along with my old second channel, if you wish to uh, go check out episodes 1 through 8 of Jesse's Hangout. And also, don't forget to check out my previous uh, videos, uh, the gameplay I did for Resident Evil, the update on the Keepers, and part one and two of Anne Berlin, and don't forget to check out the first part, if you haven't already, of John Wilmot, second Earl of Rochester, go check that out, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, I hope you guys got a lot out of this episode, I hope you got a lot out of the last episode, and I will catch you guys in my next episode, laters.